That is a house, right? Anybody ever heard of Buckminster Fuller? Probably not. Buckminster Fuller was an incredible, innovative scientist, inventor, architect, all kind of weird things. And he came up with the geodesic dome. The geodesic dome is all made out of uh, equilateral triangles. It's a dome. It's a house. And if you go to Disney, Epcot Center, the great big dome in the front of it is a geodesic dome. It's literally made, everything here is a little triangle. And I forgot what you know, exactly the shape they, they go. But it's a geodesic dome. It's very lightweight. It's very strong. You can blow this house over with the wind because it's got flat surfaces. The air just blows over. It's like around it. It's perfectly round. It's like a golf ball cut in half. It's stronger. It's lighter. You can put it together yourself. And it never, ever sold worth crap. Why? It doesn't look like this. And this is everybody's idea of a house. Think about it. You look all through your neighborhoods. Every house essentially looks the same, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They're all square. They got pointy roofs on them, almost all. What do you do because of the material? Pardon? What do you do because of the material? Also? Or is it, it the, sh the shingle with the same shingles and everything your roof is? Is it the straight edges? Mm -hmm. I think it's just we grew up liking it. That's what we had as a house, so we're used to it. That's when you think of a house, if you ask a five-year-old to draw a house, he draws that every time, doesn't he? He doesn't draw anything else. We're programming. He's going to have a house. Now, does everybody live in a house worldwide like this? No. No. But you know what? If you go to Africa, where they are living in... A cob hut. You know why they you know why the five year old draws a house? <coughs> They'll draw the house the same way. So how does an Eskimo child draw the house that grows, grows up in Eagles? Not ever. If that's all you've known, that's all you've known. So that's your point of reference. But nowadays, with the books and the internet and all that kind of stuff, if you, has anybody ever walked in a roundhouse? Yes. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. It's a different feel. To it. <coughs> has it no corners to get it, dirty. It's a little bit the, the, the roof is arching over you like this, and every, all the walls are all around. You can't hang a picture on it. <clears throat> it's hard to hang a picture on it. It's a piece of art because it's arching. Like this kind of thing. But people who live in them, even if they have straight walls and they're round rooms, people who live in them say they're great. They love them because they feel like they're secure, like they're being nurtured, held you know, by the house, protected. There's a group of them on the 35. Um, Monolithic Dome Institute. That's right. You see them that have the, the caterpillar. The caterpillar. That's what I was talking about earlier. I don't want to go there. What they do, those, like those are not, you know, those are not GDs and domes. domes. Yeah. Those are ones that actually take a balloon and inflate it and then blow insulation in it and then put concrete in it and there's your house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They're incredibly well, energy efficient. I was about to say They're incredibly strong. The energy efficient part of it? Right. The, part the uh, as matter of fact, yeah. the yeah. hurricane, Hurricane Andrew, that hit Florida, the entire neighborhood was wiped out except for a monolithic dome home. <laughs> Didn't have a mark on it. <laughs> Didn't have a mark on it. And it's really futuristic and kind of cool because it's got, you know, it doesn't have to be quite like that. It's, it's about like this, and it's got a you know front porch that comes up like this, and it's got big, big holes in it like this for windows, and looks very modern, you know. But what I'm trying to get across like is your brain 
patterns all of its responses on what it knows. Okay? If I told you that his shirt was not yellow, you would say I'm wrong, wouldn't you? Why? Because of the perception. No. No, it's a... Because I'm lying. But the reason everybody calls his shirt yellow is because we have decided that 400 or 530 nanometers in the light spectrum is going to be called yellow. Now, we could have called it something else. But we called it yellow. We could have called it lemon. That would have made more sense. We called it orange orange, right? The fruit. We could have called it lemon. But we don't call it yellow. Okay? And nobody gets confused on that. But it's all about your brain's perception. So keep that in mind. When you're processing information, you never process it in one spot. When you see something, it's going all over your brain. Because you've got to decide, ah, I saw this shape, and then the rest of your brain, all of your memory and everything has to go, well, what the heck is that shape? Does that shape have any meaning to me? And you'll figure out whether it does or not. Now, most people, if you show them this, they will not go to the house. I don't know what they come up with, tell you the truth. Rainbow, rainbow maybe, or something. You know? <laughs> a very colorless rainbow, you know? But have you ever noticed also rainbows are always in the same pattern? They go blue, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Even if you have two of them, you never see them where the red's, the red's always there, the blue's always here. Even if you have a double rainbow, you don't ever have a double rainbow like this, do you? It doesn't happen. Wavelength. Wavelength. Intersection with the uh, water droplets in the air. That's what makes a rainbow. You make one of these dark ones. They don't find this. Oh, the sun just right. Okay. Long way around the horn to get the message across. Um, there are. Da, da, da. Let's see. We want to do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Your. cell number three. Okay? Now, we're going to have this be a mechanical receptor, just for the heck of it. We'll do both, actually. So if this is a mechanical receptor, but first one. We're going to deform it, which means push on it, crush it, squeeze it, whatever. We're going to change its shape by external pressure since it's a mechanical receptor, or if it's got a hair, we're going to bend the hair, and it's going to cause sodium ions to enter. We're going to mechanically disturb our receptor, so you mechanically change the shape of the plasma membrane. This leads to sodium channels opening. So, if sodium channels open, what happens? This thing's at minus 73. 
Sodium ions rush in, right? It depolarizes to plus 50. We'll have it go all the way. Okay? That's going to open up what? Voltage dependent sodium channels. That's going to depolarize the propagation wave. So it's going to go from here all the way down to here, right? Here's my propagation wave. What happens when it gets down here? We know we have what in this area? Neurotransmitter, Neurotransmitter vesicles, right? So these are neurotransmitter vesicles. And they're going to need to exocytose, or vomit out, if you will, <coughs> their contents. Okay, why do they vomit out their contents? No. Actually, the depolarization wave is coming, right? Mm -hmm. And when it gets down to the synaptic bouton, you have voltage dependent calcium channels. So that depolarization is going to open voltage dependent calcium channel. So that leads to this. And calcium is going to enter, right? So calcium comes in. And calcium is going to bind to the cytoskeletal system. Can you figure out what's going to happen now? The calcium is going to bind to the cytoskeletal system, which is some of the cytoskeletal system is actually active in myosin and it's some other things too. The calcium is going to bind to actin and myosin, and what it's going to do is it's going to now take that actin and myosin and they're going to start zipping together like a zipper. So it goes like this. Okay. When it does that, guess what? It traps a vesicle in the middle of it. There's a vesicle right here, and I go like this, what happens to the vesicle? It gets squeezed that way, doesn't it? <clears throat> so the actin and myosin are inside of the neuron? They're inside the neuron. They're part of the cytoskeleton, just like the cytoskeleton in every cell. They bind together and cause the synaptic vesicles to move to the surface. Once they move to the surface, they fuse with the plasma membrane. So what they literally do Here's the plasma membrane. Here's the synaptic vesicle. It moves this way. When it actually bumps into it, it fuses with it. Then it separates. It does that. So what happened to the neurotransmitter? It's exocytosed into the synapse. Into the synaptic cleft. So we now have neurotransmitter in here. <coughs> 